find episodes of uh, reading short stories. And I'll be taking the short stories themselves from this volume uh, I've uh, acquired. It's Fantastic Worlds, Myths, Tales, and Stories, edited by Eric S. Rabkin. And uh, the first two stories from this volume will be The Tinderbox by Hans Christian Andersen and The Tale of Cosmo by George MacDonald. So, I'll see you on the other side. We've got two stories to cover this time, each one of them with six points to cover, so I'll try to do this quickly so that we don't use too much time and don't go over a lot of time on the video. Okay, the first story we're looking at is Tinderbox, and I gotta say, I'm not a big fan of this one, I'm gonna rate it at 3.1 out of a 6.8. Um, my biggest issue with this was it really comes across as a story like somebody who was doing a role-playing game pulled out a, 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 a random generating table and rolled the elements of the story and never bothered to really integrate them very well. It's clumsy put together, but the pieces are kind of interesting ideas, so we'll get into those as we go into uh, what we can do with them differently. Um, so, so uh, instead of having three dogs guarding three different treasures, I think it would be a good idea to do it as uh, three different dragons. Um, the other part of that for me is instead of getting them, getting access to their treasure by lulling them in some way like he does in the story, I think he should have to appease the dragons in some way, uh, run an errand for them, or um, solve a riddle, or uh, find a token of some kind from their brother's horde, or something like that. I think that would, I mean, as it stands right now, the method that's used for that was, you could have written a story without it. I mean, most of that was unnecessary. It, added nothing to the story, it had no consequence or function for the most part. A three-headed dog instead of one dog might be kind of interesting where um, it tells the hero where to find a boon or token um, in exchange for being spared after being um, beaten in some fashion. Um, so the hero could outsmart an individual head or solve a riddle and in exchange for that, the, that head of the dog will give a tip towards one boon or treasure and he can do that with each of the three heads. Um, the dogs or dragons, whatever three items that he summons later in this story, um, they should have a price for their service. Um, the thing that makes the most sense for them, based on the way this story goes, each one of them has a, a, like a patron metal. One's uh, copper, one's silver, one's gold. So maybe the way they built their hordes that way is you have to pay them in some copper, silver, or gold item in order to get their services each time you summon them. Um, the, the tinder box used to light something which summons the creature, it's sort of lacking the connection where I think 
a better way to use the tinder box in that sense would be maybe to light a sacrificial item on fire and once it's burned scrape a token or boon item from the ashes sort of like a phoenix rising from the flames but um, if you if you're in a situation and you have a problem and you need the solution you burn something you have with you and in the ashes of it you find something that will help you solve the problem. Um, that would be an interesting approach to the story rather than just having this tinder box that could just as easily be a shoe or a slipper or a hat. Um, instead of having the witch just be the person who initiates the quest and then has no other relevance other than the fact that it's just a witch that we use a witch because it's okay to kill a witch so that you don't have to worry about the character existing anytime after that. Um, that's the way it's done in this story. I think it would be more interesting to have it change so that the princess he's seeking at the end of the story is not a princess, but the daughter of the witch he first encountered. And the witch sent him on this quest because he felt or she can't rescue her daughter because her daughter's kept in a copper castle and copper is her kryptonite, her weakness. Um, and part of the reason she needed him to go get the, the, the treasures from the dragons or the dogs is because again you're dealing with things like copper which she can't touch. So he has to get the treasure and then he has to go rescue the daughter who's in the tower held by the royalty who are holding her hostage to own her power to enable them to continue to be rulers. And so it's sort of like the slightly more benevolent witch um, who's also in need of the help of the hero. Um, I think that would be a, a better turn on the story idea. Instead of medals, have the treasures be tools that give him advantages in future spots of trouble. Um, instead, go in there and he gets a magic dagger or a magic pair of shoes or um, a mask. And these, these things are the three things that become valuable in certain parts of the story that come after that. So that's the end of Tinderbox. And the next story was um, Cosmo. Uh, I would say this was a fairly good story, so I rated about 5.8 out of 7.3. Um, the Tale of Cosmo is a good story, great concept, good items, decent character ideas. Told by somebody who seems to be under the impression that why use five words when you can use nine? But, aside from that, it's got some great ideas, so... Instead of using what they use in here, taking a similar idea where you have a mural instead of a mirror, uh, of a regal courtyard painted onto a slum-like apartment in a a rundown area of a city and the mural is a regal courtyard um, to make it feel like you're not trapped in a slum but in that mural the suspicion is that there may be people moving around inside that courtyard despite the fact that it's a painting there seem to be people alive in it The mirror instead finds a poor serving girl within it and it's through watching her that a rich man sees the shallowness of his own class. Um, a prince watching a, a Cinderella kind of character starts to see a real person rather than this serving girl, this lowly servant. Um, but um, at the same time he's 
starting to notice that that the people in his own court are more like illusions cast in a mirror than this real live person that he's witnessed. Um, two women from vastly different life styles um, are the, the characters instead of this man watching this woman in a mirror. Um, and it lends them insight into each other's lives. The main character uh, sees the reflection of things in the mirror as being more bright and magical seeming. And he happens one day to discover that by passing objects into the mirror, the objects from inside the mirror come out. So he passes his mundane world objects into the mirror to get these more mystical, powerful, brightly colored, shinier looking objects from the mirror. And uh, he, he goes about with these trappings of uh, a richer, more vibrant um, world and maybe go to a sinister level and even have him exchange his wife or girlfriend with her reflection and seem to have gotten something better and more vibrant from the mirror. But at some point something happens that shatters the mirror. And when the mirror shatters, all the objects that emerged from the mirror shatter also. And he's left with nothing. Meanwhile, the person he got the mirror from now has all the objects he fed into the mirror. The man's reflection in the mirror is the only thing that's different, and the reflection in the mirror is wearing his clothes and doing the same things he's doing, but it's the woman in his clothes doing the things he's doing. But the expression is a, an expression of um, subjugation and discontent. and. At first it seems like a thing of whimsy, but he realizes he's making this person do these things. So he wants to make her happy, so he starts to try to arrange the setting and arrange the things around him in a way to please her. And as time goes on further and further, he starts to buy her trinkets, jewelry, or things like that, and adorn her the reflection in them by putting them on. And as you get further into the story, you get a point where he's completely subjugated his own identity to play this role of the, ref the female reflected in the mirror to the point where he legitimately looks like her and he's stopped being himself. He's, he's wasted away his own identity for um, this puppetry that he's playing in this mirror for this reflected woman that may not actually be their own person. And so it's a loss of self. Um, the two try to communicate through the mirror and as time goes by it becomes clearer and clearer that they're from not this, they're not occupying the same place in time. And so there's some question as to what's going on and eventually it comes to the realization that he's watching this woman and trying to convey ideas to her to try to f communicate and l learn more about her and it starts to come to realization that she's in the future and so he's trying to figure out what message she's trying to pass to him and it's only finally realized at the end that he is from the past and he's a ghost of the previous tenant of that room that they both seem to occupy. And he came to some end that she is seeing him as a ghost reliving that end. It's not, it's not something that he can avoid because it's already happened but he just doesn't know it and he's only finally coming to realize that through interacting with the next person who lived in his apartment. All right, so those are those ideas, and uh, I guess we'll see you tomorrow for another set of short stories.